I'm recording this, you know, to try to explain, you know, what I mean by natural questions to ask when um, a certain component is selected. So I'm going to pick um, the RAM component as an example because the RAM component has probably the most number of ports as a single component that is coming from Logistream. So this is the RAM component. And it is, so the first thing is to go to the help to kind of read what Logistream has to say about this component. All right. So this is the built-in help of Logistream. There's a way to actually extract this you know, into an HTML document so it's easier for you to read it. I'll talk about it in just a little bit. So under memory library, we go to RAM. And the first part is, the most important part is really to read about the behavior of RAM, which is basically you know, explaining you know, the purpose of this component and what it can do. For instance, in this case, the RAM component, easily the most complex component in the Logism built-in library, stores up to blah, blah, blah values specified in the address bit width attribute, each of which, so right here, so there are values they can store. Each value can be up to 32 bits specified in a data bit width attribute. The circuit can load and store values in RAM. So this sentence is really important too because load is reading and then store is writing. So basically, you know, this circuit, the RAM component can both be read, you can read a value, it can also change a value that is already stored in a device. Also, the user can modify individual values interactively through the poke tool. So that's, you know, kind of, you know, what we do sometimes in class, or the user can modify the entire content using the menu tool. Current values are displayed in the component. Addresses displayed are listed in gray to the left of the display area. Um, so that's referring to the editor when we are editing the content in, uh, in the RAM. So basically, you know, there's a change of terminology here. You know, well, I shouldn't say change, but the difference. So when I say a, the value of a location, it simply is referred to as, as a value here. Uh, each value is listed for each location or the content of each location. So the value is basically the content at a certain location. It's listed using hexadecimal. Both the address and the value are both uh, represented in hexadecimal. The value of the current selected address will be displayed in reverse text, white on black. So this is what it's referring to. The RAM component support, supports three different interfaces depending on the data interface attribute. So we are using the default, so that means you know, this portion here is what is relevant to us. Um, the component includes a single port on its east side, which is here, that serves for both loading, which is reading, and storing, which is writing data, which it performs you know, depends on the input label LD, which is load or floating, uh, indicate, indicates to load the data uh, at the address designated on the component's website. And zero indicates to store the data given on the, on the port. So one or floating means we are reading because it's loading. A zero means we are writing because it's storing. To transmit data into and out of the component, you will need to use a controlled buffer component illustrated below. So that's similar to what we um, talked about before, um, even though the locations of the input pin, the output pin, and the uh, negation gate, you know, to negate the control buffer. So even those, those are a little bit different, um, you know, and the arrangement of store is, you know, also different because, you know, they inverted the logic of the store. But basically it serves kind of the same purpose as, as what we have in the processor. Um, and then it also you know, shows the pins. You know, A is select which of the values in memory is currently being accessed by the circuit. So in the class, I kind of explained you know, the content of the A port as the uh, expression inside the square bracket when you access an array. So if you look at the RAM component itself as an array, then A is the index into the array, you know, which selects you know, which item in the array we want to access. 
and d is either the uh, left hand side value which means we are changing the content of an item in the array or it is what we call the right hand side value which means you know we are only reading from the ram um, in, in in order to update something else all right so that's really kind of all i need to you know kind of write about here because you know once we know the uh, purpose of a component in this case to store and also to load which is also you know we can see it as you know writing and reading you know from the component and it has multiple locations then we can tell okay so the the next portion is really kind of you know reading the pins here SEL on the south edge chip this is chip select this input enables or disables the entire RAM module based on whether the value is one floating or one. So floating and one are the same, and then zero is the other one. This input is meant primarily in situations where you have multiple RAM units, only one of which should be would be enabled at any time. In this case, you know, we in the processor, you know, we actually selectively enable and disable the RAM, you know, because sometimes you know, we don't want RAM to output it in, on this uh, data port because it would conflict with some of the other things that we want to do using the same node. Um, so the natural question is getting back to what I want to talk about you know, in today's you know, presentation is the natural question to ask really has to do with, okay, I know this. Uh, so the question is, what does it mean when the select pin of RAM is a one, like in this case? That means you know, this component is now active. If the component is active, what can it do when it's active? It can do one of two things based on the documentation that we just read. It can either read, which means LD is a one, like what it is now, or it can write, which is when LD equals to zero so that we can update you know, content in RAM. Since in this case we are reading, then you know, um, in order to accomplish you know, reading you know, from RAM, it needs two it needs one piece of information, which is where am I reading in RAM? Because in this case, this particular RAM component has 256 locations, and we have to select one of the 256 locations. That job is the A port's job. So that's why we have to track A port, and then you know, we track it all the way back to the multiplexer. So now we ask the quote unquote, the next natural question. It has to do with what the multiplexer is and what it is supposed to do. A multiplexer is a switch. It has multiple inputs and one single output. The job of a multiplexer is to select one of its input to connect to the output. How does it do it? It, it has to do with the gray dot or the connection under the gray dot. That is the select port. So that's why, you know, the quote unquote natural question, if the output of a multiplexer is in use for something, then we have to find out which input connects to the output of the same multiplexer. And this one tells me that you know input one connects to the output, and this input all goes all the way back to the program counter. And this is where we can stop the analysis because the program counter always outputs its current content at its queue port. So that means you know, after this analysis, we know that the program counter, the queue port, which is the output of the program counter, is actually connected through a switch to the A port of RAM, and therefore determining. Um, where it, we should be reading. And then the other natural question to ask is, you know, when we are reading from RAM, now that we know RAM is active, we are reading, and the program counter is connected to the A port, the next question is, who is reading? Because if you're reading a content, if you're reading from RAM, chances are, you know, the content that you're reading needs to go somewhere, because otherwise, why would you be reading from RAM? So that means you know, we have to track now you know, who is updated based on the data of the RAM, uh, the loc based on the value of the location that is being read. So that can go, that goes to a lot, a bunch of places, but of all the places, we know that the data port connects to the input of the instruction register. In a read operation, the, re the, write, uh, the data port of RAM acts as an output so that means you know, this port is actively determining the content of the wire that is highlighted at this point. So that wire ends up you know, in the D port you know, of the instruction register. And this is important because this instruction register also has its enable being a one. 
So this is the other thing that is super important is to know how to read the port of a component. The register is also you know, described in the help, uh, the library reference help. So this time you know, we are still going to be in the memory library, but this time we go to register. So when you go through this document, you will see that um, um, you will see that the enable is described here. Enable when this is zero, clock triggers are ignored. Ignored, the current value continues to appear on the output. The clock triggers are enabled when this pin is one or undefined. So in our case, it is a one. So that means that when the clock is having the um, a rising edge in this case, then it updates um, the content of the register. This is the, what we talked about when we talked about the V flip flop. Um, and basically a register is really just a multi-bit V flip flop. So that's how we can decide. Now we know that the output of RAM, which is addressed by PC, is updating the value of the instruction register. So this is a very kind of quick example of you know how um, we know what questions to ask. You know because it depends on one what the device does, which is in the documentation, and also also described in the class. And two, in order to get the job done, what does it need? Um, so that's you know those are the two main questions you know that leads to you know what I would consider quote unquote a natural question to ask. Okay, so once again, it is based on one what the device, what is the device purpose? Okay, what does it do? And then two is how what does it need to get the job done? So those are the two main questions you know that is. Kind of like the sub question to ask you know, when you when we need to figure out where to go from a certain point. Um, it is also noteworthy to kind of you know re-emphasize that it, you know the mind cannot track all this detail. Okay, you know I can do it because you know I have done this enough times, so all of this is kind of committed in my memory already. If you are new to this design, you know it is really helpful to kind of jot down things on a piece of paper. Or you know, better yet, print multiple copies of the circuits so that you can actually highlight the lines that you're trying to track and also write down values on the components, you know, such as the select of a multiplexer, so that you can actually track down you know, you know, how a multiplexer or the multiplexer is you know, selecting you know, its input or output. All right, so that's all I have you know, right now, you know, but I do want to can address the question of you know why I think there are quote unquote natural questions to ask because you know that's based on what we know about the purpose or the objective of a device and what it needs in order to accomplish that objective.